Hey, everybody. My name is Phil Stamper. I'm the president of wrestling, and you're drinking at Bo's. everybody bing mo here wanted to take a little break to welcome the sponsor reaper apparel they want to encourage everybody to break the mold live your best life live your best self just break out of that comfort zone use code drinking when you go place your order to get 10 percent off some great quality stuff great quality people Glad to be a part of the team. Let's fucking go. All right, everybody. Welcome to Drinking a Mo. It's host Big Mo here. Be sure YouTube, like, subscribe, comment, share all the good stuff because that YouTube algorithm is a pain in the ass. We're on Apple, Google, pretty much anywhere you can find your podcast. Go be sure to pay attention because we got lots of good things coming. Today I have with me guy that I've been hoping to get on here for a little bit. Phil Stanver, how are you doing? I am well, sir. How are you? Can't complain, can't complain. You know, got lots, uh, like I said, lots of good things coming. I've recently been featured on the Warrior Wrestling pre-show, so that was pretty sweet. Like Things really started picking up for a little bit after that, and, you know, like I think I mentioned on Facebook, I'm making plans to be there for the next uh, Revolver show in Des Moines. So looking forward to that. Very cool. As you should be. Oh, yeah. One of my good friends, guy that was actually best man at my wedding, Brandon Juarez, helps out at the Des Moines shows at least. So we've made plans before to for me to try to tag along there so hoping to work something out there or at the very least i can get a hotel like i did the last time very cool but uh you know first thing i'd like to start off with each guest with is what got you started as a fan and then what got you started you know i'm gonna make a go of this um you know i think i got Started, um, I started as a fan as a kid. You know, I, I was about, I think it was 11 years old. Um, I had a neighbor uh, kid who was interested in it. And so it got my attention. Um, you know, it's one thing to find it on your own and then to stick with it. But I, and at first, because I, you know, I saw it at first and then didn't have anybody else to really talk about it. And then once I had a, you know, a neighborhood kid I could talk to about it, then all of a sudden I was like all in. Oh yeah, no that definitely that definitely helps when you have somebody to kind of share that passion with, you know, whoever it might be, and you know we bouncing ideas like coming up with random storylines and stuff like that. Right. Which um, I've got my head full of those. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then by the time, you know, like I said, I was eleven when I was in, got interested. By thirteen. I was, I had written letters to WWE and WCW um, to like say, Hey, I want to be involved. How can I be involved as a kid? Why aren't kids involved? Like mm. um, I, I got letters back from WCW, which was cool. Mm. Um, some regional promotions that I knew about also wrote me, uh, actually I got a phone call from one um, and that was kind of cool. So at like 13, I knew about things like training and, um, mm. You know, you had to be involved. And, and so like that put me in a mindset of, okay, if I want to do this, then I know at a certain point, like this is what I should be doing. Um, and when I turned 18, uh, I was at a financial place of, can I afford to go to training or can I afford to go to college? Mm. And I, cause I was paying either way, I was paying for it myself. Um, and so I made the choice at the time, like, I'll go to college, but I started working in the back for different promotions. So I was like, I want to know if this is a business I really want to be in. Mm. And I mean, that was a long time ago. So that, that answer was yes. Um, 
And then um, at the time I, you know, I wrestled while I was in high school, I competed in, in judo by that point. Um, and so I would go to training and people would want to roll or not training. I'd go to work backstage and people would want to roll live with me. And uh, to be fair, I would whoop them all handedly. Um, <laughs> and so then they would start showing me pro wrestling stuff. Now that was not my formal training. I got trained later, yeah. but it sort of primed my brain for like, yes, this is something I really wanted to be doing. And uh, when I, this is going to sound horrible, but it led again to a good place. Um, I was in, I was still in college and, uh, a doctor misdiagnosed me with a precancerous condition called Barrett's esophagus. Mm. Um, and so in my brain, I was like, well, I'm going to develop cancer. It's either it's now or nothing. <laughs> um, and so I went ahead and started training and then two months in found out the doctor was full of it. And my pathology came back and I didn't have any sign of it. And hmm. when I was trying to question him about it, he denied it, anything he ever said. And I was like, you know, am I insane? Well, good thing my mother's a nurse because she was in the room with me when you said it. So <laughs> um, just so but it, but it, I always knew it was what I was going to do. It just sort of kicked me in the butt to do it a little bit earlier than probably I would have. Um, no. uh, understandable. I mean, you get news like that, like you might have cancer. That would be enough to be like well might as well do it now if i'm ever gonna do it exactly 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 and you know stuff has happened recently with wrestlers that have had cancer with the recent passing of jason strife that right. was definitely one that hit me hard because he was somebody that i met when he was doing some of his uh rounds in uh, southern california when i was stationed in san diego met him at a promotion socal pro down there and he mentioned magnum up here and then i ended up meeting people like brandon juarez and a lot of the other best friends that i have to this day so um very cool oh yeah no i'm forever thankful to him and you know definitely sucks how everything went down with him I agree. But on to a brighter note, some of the promotions people might know you from there. You posted a lot on Facebook about Maryland or MCW Maryland championship wrestling, which they, they pop up on my radar every once in a while because they have some pretty solid shows, pretty big names coming through there. Yeah. MCW, um, they went through a period of time just before I got there where they weren't drawing as well. They had smaller size crowds and they, they were trying to figure out, you know, they've been around for a minute. And I think in a way they were trying to re-envision themselves and had to really look, had to struggle through that for a little bit. And at one point um, they weren't really weren't drawing that well. And then they turned around and went, well, wait a minute, why aren't we booking some more of those name notable people, not just on the independent scene, but more former WWE talent or impact talent um, and get that presence involved with us and then build a quality show around them, you know? And so that really has been a good product, a uh, bu good business model for them um, that has worked out really well, both for the live crowd and now av being available on Fight TV. So we're getting more and more people interested mm -hmm. um, and I have been a part of them since that, all that's happened and also having to help them revitalize their social media presence. Mm. Um, and, you know, what, what are they doing and who are they trying to reach out to and how consistent you post and, you know, all the things yeah. that you need to do to build up a good brand identity on, on, on social media. And you can see that very positive return. Um, you know, their, their Facebook just hit 50,000 followers. Oh boy. And for an independent company, that's, rarely heard of so yeah no that that's big numbers for just about anybody and you're very much right with the current day and age of especially independent wrestling social media is such a big component of that because you reach that many more people that maybe just passing by a friend's page and like oh what's that mm -hmm. But uh, another promotion you've just recently become involved in, Mid-Death Pro. 
I've been, I've been wanting to get out there to do it, but you know, work and all that shit, but you know, they've come into something pretty unique. You know, you see a lot of companies doing deathmatch style wrestling and some promotions that that's pretty much their thing, but not so many that, excuse me, do the no, no ring deal, which, right. you know, in independent wrestling today, it's like a lot of promotions need to find something that makes them unique and right. the no ring kind of style there. Definitely that definitely unique. I mean, wrestling in itself is a, you know, a genre of a genre that then has multiple genres within it. And yeah. Not, and you know one of the things I like about Mid Death Pro is it is that is there deathmatch wrestling? Yes. Is there hardcore wrestling? Which there is a difference. Yes. Yes. Is there, bar, is there are there bar fights that are different than being you know straight hardcore or straight deathmatch? Yes. Mm, and so yep. even within what they're doing with a no ring concept, um, they are doing something that stands out. And I think you're seeing a positive return. And you you know now, especially being involved myself, like to talk to some people who are like, I'm really interested in what's happening here. This feels very different. It feels like something new. Hey, let's try it out. Um, mm. And I like that appeal, you know, it's not, it, it, yeah. that it is being able to stand out and on its own. No, definitely. And, you know, they recently been, uh, you know, they announced their, well, I think it was you that actually announced and correct me if I'm wrong, them going to Vegas. Yep. Coming so up gonna, at the end of the month. Yeah. That's going to be something pretty sweet. And, uh, you know, I've been lucky enough to interview a couple people that have been used on a show. Most recently released the episode I had with Tony Garrix um, mm -hmm. and had this other guy on the show a couple times that uh, I guess is come up on the bad side of you in Bo Gott. Like, I want to like Bo Gott. I really do. At his heart, like, when I first met Bo Gott, he had just been competing in, like, amateur wrestling and MMA. Like, okay, that's that's my more particular favorite style of, of wrestling. And now, like, I don't know what his issue is. Like, so now I'm calling him on his shit. Like, just to be honest about it. And I like now I'm even referred to it as his own brand of bullshit. Like, just because it's sort of like he, he's blaming me for things that happened to him at Mid Death Pro before I got there. Like, just started to be involved. I, you know, I can talk about what happened, but I wasn't there when it happened. Yeah. Um, and so he wants he wants to complain to me about what's going on. He feels like he's being edged out, and it's like no man like i'm giving you opportunity like you actually wanted this match with joey knots coming up um when we come back to des moines and now you're are you upset about like i'm kind of confused are you upset that you got what you wanted you're upset mm. with me that you don't get what you want but then you got what you want like what so I'm, now i'm gonna raise the stake for him like he has to show up and show up well and so if he doesn't win his match against joey knots he's out of mid death row well, yep, big stakes there. Um, another promotion, one that I actually became f familiar with you at before the other places, Wrestling Revolver. Mm -hmm. Now, funny thing with Revolver, my part of my bachelor party was actually at a Revolver show. Oop, there we go. But uh, part of, like I was saying, part of my bachelor party was actually at a revolver show. We were at a steakhouse here in Omaha and Brandon leans over to me. He's like, Hey, uh, you want to go to revolver in Des Moines? I'm like, um, sure. <laughs> and, you know, then getting to go, I was actually at the, uh, tales from the ring. Got to see my actual, we talked about the difference between, Deathmatch and hardcore. I actually got to see my first, actually, what I consider legit deathmatch between um, Jake Chris and Joel Bateman. That was mm -hmm, mm -hmm. pretty sweet, especially that ending had my jaw on the floor. You know, you 
and the uh, the unit having you know the the last revolver show things didn't really go your guys' way there yeah i mean we've and we've been on a roll you know that, quite admittedly that, maybe we let a little bit of that success go to our head you know i i, I can't diminish trey bested jt dunn now it took i don't know if you saw some of the after images like I, J, jt cut his lip open from here all the way up to almost his nasal cavity Ooh. um and that, and that's just what you see on the outside on the inside it was cut like in three different places Ooh, boy. Uh, an iowa death match which what the hell is an iowa death match other than a death match in iowa like yeah with jess who alley catch has beat two other times yeah and so like this one was enough like what um and then the matrix or the matrix uh, tyler matrix and logan james mm. with infrared get put into yet another three-way tag team match for the championship and it's like Where's their one-on-one opportunity? And the last time yeah. they were promised a one-on-one opportunity, Dad Scout was inserted. But guess what mm. happened? Dad Scout walked away with the victory. So, you know, yeah. we maybe had too many blinders on, got lost our eye on the ball. So, like, we have to re-strategize and come back together. But if anything, and I said this too loudly, I was like, if anything, now this allows us to not be cuffed. The fact that JT Dunn is no longer the Revolver World Champion means that we don't follow the rules. Mm -hmm. We can kind of set our own pace now, and that's a very dangerous thing. So now what happens when we return to Des Moines? JT Dunn will be in a pure rules match with uh, Wheeler U. Yeah, that's that's going to be pretty epic right there, you know. And like you mentioned, maybe this, you know, I, I guess the term that comes to my mind is a bit of a blessing in disguise. So now you guys can come back pure focused for a pun intended unit and you know who knows maybe come back even more dangerous and powerful than ever yeah and you know you brought up Yuta versus JT Dunn coming up and man Yuta is on a bit of a roll after regaining the pure championship and JT Dunn hey you you can't uh, you can't overlook him. That's for sure. Um, now, next, I got two categories I like to go over. One's a name game where I name off some people. Mostly, I like to theme after the guests, and then the next after that's a bit of a random question round where I just I never know what. I'm going to put it down and, you know, I used to call it a speed round, but it never went that damn quick. So I just changed it up. Anyways, name game. We're going to go with first member of the unit, Alley Catch. Um, she's the queen of revolver. That, that is, that is true. You know, she's, you know, been, Doing some pretty great things, you know, with GCW, Revolver, anywhere she goes. You know, her and Effie got a good thing going there when they team up and, you know, part of the unit, like I said. Next up, guy that is the mid-death pro champion, the Carver. So I'm smirking a little bit because uh, it's a match that has yet to be seen because we 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 actually had a we had a no ring match between me and him back, back in March and the promotion has not put out this video yet um, and he whooped my ass for probably 12 minutes literally in a parking lot like it went from in the building into a parking lot against back and forth off the side of cars like back into the building like. Mm. Um, And he is legitimately, like, when you see Carver come at you, it is a freaky, otherworldly experience when Carver is walking at you. That look in the eyes, in the mask, it's like, (laughs) Mm -hmm. done. 
Oh, yeah. Nope. I've been there, not necessarily being in a match against him, but I've at Magnum Wrestling here in Omaha, which Carver has frequented, been front row right by the entrance as he's walking past me. And I'm like, that dude's one scary motherfucker. And, you know, he was actually supposed to be here at uh, Magnum for a no rope barbed wire match against Bogot. And, but apparently there was the mid death pro show, I believe it was the day before. Yeah. And he apparently had a pretty scary injury there and wasn't able to make it. They still had the no rope barbed wire match, but, you know, Carver had a bit of a replacement that night. Yeah. Next up, guy that kind of spoiled the night for Trey Miguel at that last Revolver show, Steve Macklin. Intensity. Like that, like just if I have to think of all words, like this is a man, I mean, you know, I guess you should never really say former military. Like the- remember was an active member of the military previously is sort of in like my brain almost that stereotypical like has that body type like power packed guy like uh the only person who i can think in muscle mass that i can compare him to is davy richards um has a very has a similar not exactly but like a similar kind of body type but hits the ground running and hits people just as fast as as he's hit the ground running um no. as, Trey, as Trey miguel learned but, yeah no he definitely learned that pretty quick at that show, after Macklin gained that, uh, what was a golden ticket sort of mm-hmm. thing? I I was watching the show, but I brain fart on what he won, but it was like a golden I mean, ticket m- money in the bank sort of deal. I mean, yeah, basically. I mean, and, and for context, you know, it wasn't like we had a ladder and you had to climb to get something. It was whoever won this scramble match. Um, yeah. And, you know, he might have stolen that win a little bit, you know, in some people's eyes, because uh, it looked like Crash was Crash Jackson was about to win, and he rips Crash off and takes the pin for himself. So, yeah. you know, there's a lot of people who are upset about that. So that's why you know Crash and and Macklin are going to be facing off because Crash feels he's owed something. So, yeah, and I mean that match in particular with uh, you know Crash not, not have taken a pin yet at. Revolver is going to be kind of interesting to see how that works out for him. Right. Next up, last but not least, the guy at the head of Wrestling Revolver, Sammy Callahan. Um, I've known Sammy for a long time. And, you know, there's people who are like, well, how, how can you and Sammy tolerate each other? Um, we're very, it's weird. We're very different people. But also at the same time, like some very similar things. Um, you know, I, I'll say that Sammy Johnston is, is a friend sometimes because Sammy Johnston is really Sammy Callahan. And I want to punch Sammy Callahan in the face on a, on a repeatedly on a regular basis. And there are a lot of times that Sammy's in the business of being Sammy Callahan and I want nothing to do with him. And like, Damn it! Like, like <laughs> I. So, we. It is a very contentious relationship. Um. Just very like this is just what it is. Um. But early on, I bought into Revolver. You know, I, I'm I'm there, and I don't mean financially, but like I'm part of the soul of that company, and it's part of my soul. So like, you're not getting rid of me. You're not getting rid of Sammy. So we have to kind of work together somehow to make things happen. No. And, you know, you guys do got a good thing going there. And, you know, definitely come out with some entertaining stuff. So, seems to be working out so far. So, so right. far, so good, I guess. Next up, uh, random question round. I do have one that I always start off with. That's the only one that I really repeat. But craziest in-match moment, whether one that you were in, or one that, you know, you were there for manager-wise? <laughs> um, one of the most 
a ridiculous ridiculous thing that stands out suddenly in my brain and i don't know why this particular one is but is what it is uh i was in a six-man tag match in north carolina and i tag out of the ring and i am sitting on the ring apron like facing away from the ring and we had a valet on our team and she's looking at me and i just see her face go and I'm like, what? what? What's going on? And she, like, is just shaking her head. And I'm, like, looking around me. And I'm like, I don't, what? And I get up and I look inside the ring. And I see uh, the opponents almost sort of staring at each other. And I see the ref holding his face. And I'm like, I'm turning back to her. Like, what just happened? And no one's telling me anything. And then match continues. And I'm like, Okay come to find out uh one of the wrestlers got a little lost in the match and turned and punched the referee in the face as a way to try to like save himself i'm like how do you bold face punch the referee in the face <sighs> the ref didn't know what to do the match kept going <laughs> this is this is not like let me put over this mat this was this was like this is something you don't like does not happen should not happen somebody who should not have been in the match and it's like what the hell <laughs> that's crazy that um, that, that person that's... did not work back in that company again after that <laughs> i would imagine so it would be hard to get anybody to want to ref a match with that particular person after just randomly right. knocking a ref in the face like that Oh. And he was he was one of those guys who's like, oh, you know, I've been around 20 years. Okay, good, good for you. But then didn't know basic things about wrestling when you talk to him. And it's like, I don't I don't think this is where you need to be. Yeah, definitely would be hard to argue against that one. Next question. Let's say you had a dream recruit for the unit. Who would it be? I mean, of course, you can always go up top. You can always be like, you know. Um, I'm not going to lie. There are a lot of people that I've kind of been keeping my eye on, and I'll be like, man, if they were here. Um, and, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this out in the universe, and I've never told anybody this, because if I have to weigh my odds, like, of course, I can always be like, let's bring in the friggin' rock. Like, we're not going to get the rock, you know. Yeah. Let, let's be realistic. If there's a, a scale of people that I'm like, could be attainable i want zach saber jr um okay. that's a good... that'd be a hard as hell get i'm not gonna like that i'm not saying that that's a tomorrow thing but, yeah. um you know it, it's on, it's on the what if list and that's like oh i feel that could be attainable i really feel like that's someone that can reach out to um I'm not going to lie and, and say that I hadn't thought about Wheeler Yuta before being in the unit. I mean, he, he has some other responsibilities right now. <laughs> yeah. But like, he, you know, hey, that would have been an impressive get. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a lot of people right now that are out there. I mean, I may or may not have tried to talk speedball into joining the unit. Okay. Imagine a speedball Mike Bailey in the U and what that would mean for wrestling. Oh, that would get and, a reaction. Yeah. And so, like, and this is, you know, we talked about, you mentioned fantasy booking earlier. Like, you know, this is me fantasy booking a little bit. Yeah. Um, I have thrown things out there against the wall to see what would happen. Um, and, but one of the things about the unit, and you see that whether you watch, um, you know, JT Dunn is the Lynch between the unit that's functioning in New England and the unit that's functioning in the Midwest. And you see the people who rotate around us. And there are people when, that you never expect that are actually in the unit. Like, oh, that's really cool that Sam McCallahan booked Dirty Dango. Oh yeah, by the way, he joined the unit um, and was already a part of the unit. And Sammy didn't realize that. <laughs> or randomly forgot that fact until after he was booked and announced. <laughs> so that's another you know key figure and, a, and another top 
recognizable name in the world of professional wrestling. That is, yeah. Um, so I keep I keep that list open. Yeah. Um, and there's even a lot of a lot of young guys that I'm just like you know that haven't been in Revolver yet. That you know I know if I would say certain names that people might not know who they are. That I'm like I see their persona. I see how they wrestle. They would be a fit for a very particular reason why I think they're the, a puzzle piece that could join in very easily. Good. Gotcha. You know, you brought up kind of throwing ideas against the wall. That's actually how a lot of my early episodes of the podcast happened. Like I see somebody big liking a tweet of mine and I'd be like, hmm, like the SATs. I, they had liked a tweet of mine on B-Boy. And I was like, yeah. wait a minute. I So I DM them and boom, just thinking um, might be a long shot, but here and got them. Same thing with uh, Carrie Silken. I was just like, um, yeah, this is going to be an extreme long shot, but yeah. And he agreed. So it was like, <laughs> you, you never know. Sometimes when you just throw an idea out there to see if it sticks, it sticks. Mm-hmm. Next question. Favorite drink, whether alcoholic or non, or maybe one of one of each. Oh, geez. Um, wow, that's a really good question. Um, so uh, randomly, I, I have a stomach issue, so I, I can't, I don't do carbonated beverages well, so whether that's soda or beer. So that kind of eliminates a good number of things. Yeah. Um, uh, not gonna lie, like Mr. Pim is probably my favorite soda. Um, uh, next to Big Red Pop, like I don't know why. I, I love Big Red Big Red Soda, but I only get it whenever I go to the Midwest because I don't see it around stores in my area um, on the East Coast. Um, but again, I very rarely drink it because one, the health issue, and then two, like it, it kills my stomach. Um, beer, I don't have a beer just because it just. Again, my my stomach can't handle beer at all. Like, yeah. Um, but uh, I'm trying to think. I'm, not, I'm trying to think if I have another like a liquor of choice. Um, <laughs> you know, there are some really <laughs> like people who know me are like I don't really drink. I'm not that kind of. I just don't. It's not my thing. But like some good apple pie moonshine. Hmm. Hmm. Um, and I may or may not have had a neighbor who was making their own and man <laughs> powerful stuff <laughs> next well I'm you brought up Mr. Pibb I'm kind of a Dr. Pepper fiend myself that's fair that's a good choice and you know I have I am a bit more of a beer guy I got Coors Banquet in the fridge and my personal favorite beer, Kona Big Wave. I got hooked on it when I was down in Hawaii with the Navy and started seeing it around here. And pretty much any chance I can get my hands on it, I do. I don't think I've ever tried it. Oh, it's one of my favorites. That and their longboard. Their longboard's amazing. Last question. Best advice for anybody wanting to get into wrestling? Mm. I always want to talk with people about what are their own expectations? What is it that they expect? Um, because there is, a re- there is a reality to it. No matter what you do in wrestling, it's going to be hard work. And it should be hard work because it, it's a job. And, you know, people, uh, it's interesting because people will talk to me just general about like wrestling, not even necessarily wanting to get in and how, oh, wrestling must be so much fun. And I'm like, is it like it for me it's a job and so you have to do hard work at this job um and even you know students i've known and um you mentioned mcw before and um and i am not gonna name a name but a, a story just came in my head about like i remember when leo rush was really getting out there like and at a point where like he was being scouted by wwe he had been a ring of honor and he was you know really working all over the world yeah. Another one of the trainees was like, why am I not getting those same opportunities? And it's like, well, how often are you here? You know, you he had a particular gimmick that's like that doesn't really sell well. 
how often are you going to the gym? Like just general, like you're not putting in that same level of effort yeah. what leo's does like how can you make how can you say that you need to be there yeah when, when you put in this this much effort of the same amount yeah. um and so you know it, it takes hard work and there, but and to be fair there are people who do work amazingly hard who aren't getting some of those opportunities and it's nothing to do about the level of work they're putting in it, it is about the right opportunity the right time the right people like and yeah. and that sucks and that's a hard pill to swallow and um I'm very real about, you know, I've known, I've known people who've, who've had multiple tours of Japan yet crowd surf on, on friends' couches because they don't have enough to, to have their own place. And yeah. so th- there has to be a reality to what you are looking to do. And no matter what it is, there's hard work involved in doing it. Oh, yeah. Like, as a lot of people say, anything worth doing is we're putting in that work to get it done. Like mm-hmm. any, anything worth doing is probably not going to be easy. And right. like with wrestling, not everybody is going to start off with a WWE contract. There's right. year, years of hard work that go into it. And you know what, unfortunately, like you mentioned, some people don't get to that point and it stinks because you know, there's a lot of people out there that with the hard work they put in probably would in a lot of eyes from people deserve that, but you know, due to whatever circumstances, they don't get it. Yeah. And you know, it is this weird balancing act because with some people, I also say, don't let yourself get pigeonholed by the other thing because a lot of people in wrestling will bring in another skill set, Like, um, oh, they're really good at marketing and press, or maybe they have graphic ability. Maybe they're a great videographer. And it's like, you know, what do you want people at the end of the day to, what do you want to be doing and be known for? And, you know, how do you cautiously place yourself in that space? Um, and let people know, like, at a point, but this is where I want to be. Yeah. Um, and there's appropriate ways and appropriate times, appropriate people to be doing that with. Um, and, uh, because of my connection with certain people in wrestling, like I, I knew of a, of a graphics position that was open in a, in a nationally televised company. I'm trying to be very cautious. Yeah. And I told the person like, the focus of this is the graphic work. It cannot be that you are a wrestler because they don't, that's not what they're looking for. They're looking for somebody who does amazing graphic work, which you do because you understand wrestling, but they don't want it. They don't want you because you're a wrestler. So you have to be very understanding of that fact. Um, and, you know, I, I've talked to people who are WWE, rest, or WWE, WWE referees who were once wrestlers and that they had to have that hard conversation with themselves. Like, where do I want? What do I want? I want to make money in wrestling. It's not where I, you know, in the way I thought, but look what I'm getting out of this opportunity. Yeah. And I'm getting to travel and I'm getting paid to be involved with wrestling. And I'm learning there's and it's funny because even at, at that level in the WWE, like a lot of the referees aren't just referees. Um, yeah. They're helping to do talent scouting. They're helping to, um, um, oh my gosh, I just forgot the term. Um, uh, they're road agenting a little bit. Mm. Like they're um, uh, helping to plan some of the media trips. Like they're, they're doing more things than just yeah. being a referee. And that allows them such a bit valuable skill set to bring. Um, and you know, one, uh, one random thing that I didn't know about, um, for a long time was, uh, when, when Vince, Mc, not when Vince, sorry, when Eric Bischoff and Hulk Hogan went to, mm. uh, TNA and, uh, you know, they wanted to do, let's do Monday night wars again, you know, let's move things to Monday, let's change the ring that they were also providing. And even when, even back even further, when, when Hogan first went to WCW, let me tell you about production. Let me talk to you, about, hey brother, about lighting and mm. the ring, and like to hear that at that level too. That okay, they're not just sharing. Like, look at me, I'm a top level superstar. Like, I'm bringing another element that needs to be talked about. It needs to be discussed, and we need to focus on how we're providing this to people. Um, yeah. And that's such a valuable thing to then hear it again. Somebody at that level was doing. You know, you should. Why are you any different? No, so you definitely have to stand out in order to get the attention from that high level so you know got to figure out how you can do that and all very good advice 
that I mean, is and, about. Oh no, go, oh, ahead. no go, go ahead. I was going to share a bad story because it was oh. like I, I've taken I've taken wrestlers to other events before, you know, mm. and it's help. Like you know, you're here to let people see you, so show that you're willing to put in the effort. Like help set up things. Let's you know, do chairs, do the ring, whatever. And I one in one particular time, I brought two people with me um, to a revolver event. And they sat on their hands and did nothing. And I'm like, and now you're complaining to me why you're not being used here? Like, or, or like, hey, well, you know, this person's friends with this person. I don't understand why that person isn't bringing me in. It's like, well, look what you didn't show up with. Like, and that resonated stronger with that person. No, nope, yeah, no. Nope. And that is often the way, you know, people get into those shows i interviewed a guy that i had met when i was stationed in san diego that pretty big and for you don't expect a guy of his size to be able to pull off what he can and with uh, xpw doing their kind of rebirth i guess they don't really like me on social media right now but that's another story but he showed up to the King of the Death Match show and was just helping out in the back. And somebody had to drop out, and they're like, mm, Who can do this? And somebody pointed at him, and that he got in the show. Mm-hmm. So it's just one of those things you always, always got to be ready. Right. Absolutely. That is about all I have. One, one thank you for taking the time to talk to me tonight. And two, where can people find you social media wise? So if they don't already have their eyes on you, they can go ahead and get them there. So you can find me on pretty much every social media channel at Trust in Phil. So Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, Snapchat, Twitter, Twitch. I'm I'm there at Trust in Phil. We'll get all that in the description of both podcasts and YouTube versions of the show but like i said thank you for taking the time to talk to me and i look forward to seeing you and the unit at revolver in march absolutely thank you